Greetings and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we refined our data objects and how we organized the initialization of our data and our, our objects for products and cities. Now we're going to look at how we can decouple our objects better and overall improve dramatically our, our design patterns. And we're going to use signals to do this. And a perfect example of where we can put this to use is in this arrive at port. Arriving at the port could have a lot of things happen like we could have maybe uh, some sounds that we would want to go off maybe some animations that would trigger we could have perhaps a message box come up uh, for the money lender or something but you know one of the things we do know we have to do and that's what we're doing here one of the things is getting those random prices and doing this update and this current design is weak because look at how much detail we have to know about products and the panels and the methods within them in order to get this working now on a small game design like this and where we're at this this wouldn't be the most horrible thing in the world but as you build this out this is just not a good design pattern so instead we can use signals and we're going to start by just setting them up and understanding how they work and then we'll implement how to update the pricing uh, using these signals and when we arrive at the port so we start here at the top by defining a signal. So we're going to say arrive at port. And I'm just making this all cap so I can see it stand out in the code for me. And I'll know, hey, there's a signal. And so let's emit the signal right now. We can, as simple as just saying emit signal and then pass in arrive at port, just like that. And when we arrive at the port, then this signal gets admitted, gets emitted, just like that. So we can look back up here. We have arrive at the port as a defined signal, and this is going to fire it off. Now, if we run this right now, we're just going to run and make sure nothing, you'll see nothing breaks, and everything works just like it should. We didn't really do anything, though. All we did was just announce that we're arriving at the port. Well, we need to then fire off and actually do what we need to do. And that's all this code right here. You know, this is really what we want to have happen for now. Now, one of the things to consider is that we have this loop here. And the nice thing about when we announce arriving at the port, we don't need to loop through anything. We can just have the city products themselves respond to arriving at the port. So let's go ahead and see how we would do that. I'm going to jump over to our city product and we'll notice that we don't have any reference to main here. So it gives us a chance right away to see one of the core things of setting these signals up is you have to have a reference and subscribe to the signal and the signal is on main. So we're going to have to pass main in just like we did uh, when we pass anything else into here. So we're going to come in here and pass main in. So we have a reference to our main game object. And uh, there's a lot of advantages to this. We now have this reference. There might be other things we want to do. Like we might want to set up a signal for other reasons. And, and I'm sure we will. But at this time, we're subscribing to this signal for arriving at the port. So when we come in here in this in it here, we want to take our main and we're going to say connect. And so this is what tells it that we want to connect to a signal and we know what our signal name is. It's arrive at port. And then here's the target for the signal. Well, we want us to be the target for the signal. We want the city product object to pick up this arrive at port signal. And then here we need to say what we want to accomplish. So we're going to say get random price just like that and so what's gonna happen is this gets connected up and we can get rid of this now because when we arrive at the port the very first time in the ready it's gonna fire off this event and it's gonna run get random price and uh, do its thing now the problem is we don't really have this logic that <laughs> I did this before I deleted this part out well, I didn't delete it yet but we don't have this logic yet in other words we're just gonna let this run like it always did 
And in the short term, just to show you how this works, we're going to create a function called arrive at port city product. How about we'll say update city product and just leave it at that for now. And the reason is, is we can't really, we don't want, we have more work that we have to do uh, to get all this functioning. I just want to show you how this signal works. So we're going to say print signal fired and we're going to print it out on, we'll just print out the, pro, the product, signal fired, product equals product dot product name plus city equals city dot city name. So I'm wanting just for now, what we're doing is showing you exactly how you do signals. So we're connecting here to main and uh, we're making sure we're subscribed to be notified when we arrive at the port this sets it up for it being our cells and this is what we want to call so it's just going to call into here now and say that we've fired off the signal so let's go and see what we get and we got an error it says we expected three arguments. Okay, so I probably made, oh, I forgot to pass along main. So here's, uh, you know, it's good for us to see these errors. We can see that we had an invalid call. Remember I added main here, but I forgot to pass it along. So, oops, and we want this to be self. So when we're in main, we want to pass along our self. So that's going to happen a lot when you make new objects, passing along the object that created that object is going to be a, a fairly common thing that you might want to do in, in um, you know just getting everything so that they can talk to each other like this and set up our signals so let's run again and we'll see that we don't have any uh, changes here I mean this works the same but notice how down here what gets fired off so let's run it again and you'll see run and you'll see that it's firing off all the, for every time. So if you, if, it, if you want to change the price every time, you can. But if you only wanted the price to change, like for the cities you're going to, or you wanted to restrict so that only the city you're arriving at the port gets notified, we'll have to do a little work to do that. And you can see that it looks like we're getting some zeros in there too which is a sign that you know we are we have we have some work to do to clean this up in, in our signal system but you can see like that how easy it is to wire this signal up and we're able to notify the city product that hey you need to change your price so now when we have update city product happen we in some ways want to use like the kind of code we have here we want to randomize and we want to check and uh, notice that we're calling into city product. Well, we're already kind of doing that, uh, or we can do that right in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's copy this and paste into our city product. When we do our update city product, we're going to paste in this randomize. We're going to check and see. And notice how this is a get random price call right here so we can then from that point finish that part of the code out so we we basically have done all of this part now we have this call right here well one of the cool things is is let's just cut it and get it out of there for now and come back to city product and we'll paste it in here since we have access to that product we can just get rid of of that and we can for now, keep this in place the same way, just like it is. Oops, I'm sorry. In here. So after we update the price in this, then we're going to just call in the product panel update. And we don't need to reference city product because we're in city product. So we, get, we can simplify that reference right there. 
and I probably would just consider doing this just cutting and pasting for now simplifying it just a little bit more and we'll leave it like that for now and let's run uh, we don't need this anymore none of it goes away we're done when we arrive at the port we're just doing the signal and there we go look at that so decoupled a little bit of work to set it up but look at the advantages here is we can hook anything we want into arriving at the port it doesn't matter what it is any uh, achievement system so maybe we want to counter and after you've uh, you know come to an a port 10 times you get an achievement yeah you've traveled 10 times with this we can subscribe to this event just like we did when we updated the city product so now I've shown you how to do a signal and we set it up and we fired it but all over this app there's opportunities for you to do that and to fix things so I'm going to stop this lecture. I'm going to show you one more technique, and then I'm going to challenge you to refactor this game and to go and find other places to use signals. I'm going to also tell you I don't use signals a lot. I really don't. I, I like keeping a, min, a minimal amount of signals. Like, for example, if I'm talking between product and city product, and I just need to do one thing, uh, and, and, it, and it's a specific operation like we'll see when we buy and we're doing some buying things we're having to talk between the uh, these objects a little more I don't want to do too many signals I, I think it's important sometimes I'll hook something up with objects and then if I have a, a nether instance where I need to do a similar thing or where a signal would allow me to reduce that redundancy and decouple then I will use a signal. So, but I'll, a lot of times I'll do it like in, I did here, where I'll first get the objects talking, make sure I completely understand the architecture, and then simplify and make it uh, more manageable this way. You can see how the real key here, what I think a lot of people don't get, they're like, well, you're having to type all this out and it's real complicated, why don't you just call it directly, is I can name the method anything I want in here and I can handle inside of city product exactly how I want to manage this without having to mess with any of the other objects now before I end this lecture there's one more thing I want to show you how would you handle it for example you'll see here we're firing off these signals and it's hitting all the cities you know we don't need it to go to all the cities well, they're, they're, you know, we, we only maybe want to update and fire the signal on certain cities. Well, there are groups in, uh, in, in, in Godot, and we'll probably look at those a little bit later, but I really believe that uh, you end up just having redundancy there because you really need, you can't just hook a group up and have the wiring work. You still need to have the object reference when the signal fires. And since you have to have the object reference when the signal fires anyway, the groups just become a, like a redundant kind of way of organizing your, your structures, I feel. And because they're strings rather than lists that you can manage in collections, I don't like more strings. It reminds me too much of the tags in unity that, that we try to avoid if we can so there's a simpler way and that's I guess the whole point here is there's just a much simpler way we need to know what our current city is anyway so let's say when we arrive at the port it would make sense when you arrive at the port to say hey this is the city I arrived at so we can learn how we can send a parameter and we can also at the same time make our entire logic just make a little more sense so when we arrive at the port we don't have to just call a method you know arrive at the port or announce that signal we can also say uh, what the current city is and uh, we were getting it by doing the city index so it was what city cities and then the city index which will change that at some point I'm going to challenge you to change that in a in a new uh, video or you know in an assignment or something but we can reference it this way it's not necessarily wrong but we're just gonna pass along 
the current city that we arrived at as part of our signal then that means it's just really simple for us to come in here when we get this call and say this is the city that we've arrived at and I give it an underscore so I know it doesn't conflict with this city what what city are we arriving at and then that way I can say if city equals self or city like that and so what I'm doing is I'm taking and I'm comparing the the city that we is the current city we're in to the city and we need a double equals here so that's how you you know check if these objects are equal so we're seeing if the city that we passed in here that we're currently going to is equal to the city that it is then we do all this otherwise we don't so we're not going to see we shouldn't see shanghai nagasaki and all these tons fire off we should just see it fire off the city that we're going to if i yeah because it's inside of here so let's run it and then we'll see and you'll see right down there it only fired off signal fired for hong kong signal fires deceptive it's signal processed but that's a very clean way to do it i do it that way rather than the groups up oh, we might have an error here look at that and it's because oh i know why we always want to update the price no matter what if we random or not that's important i did that before is we only want to update the price if we're greater than 50%, but we always need to update the panel no matter what. So definitely it's part of the big assignment I'm giving you guys to update uh, would be to do the same thing with the product panel, implement a signal so that you don't have this hard reference here to update the panel. We got rid of it here, but it's tricky to uh, work with these signals the first time. You'll have to think it out. And it looks like we still have something funny going on where we have some zeros in there where, oh, I know, ah, okay, we're gonna end this lecture, I promise you, fast, but we need a first time or force, forced uh, price change or forced uh, price, you know, forced price change equals true, we'll set it to true. Uh, and then um, inside of here, we say if it's random uh, greater than five R, we can say forced price change. And then we just, after we force the price change, then we just set this to false. Now when we rerun it, we're not gonna get those zeros in there because we're forcing it to change. And we can run it a couple times more just to make sure. And that was what our final little thing is we needed to fix. And I do that rather than uh, then uh, maybe changing out the arrive at port or having just a first time because there might be other times we want to force the price to change maybe there's an event that happens or some kind of reason why we would want to flip this flag so all we have to do is flip this flag to true and it's going to ignore the random function here and always force a price change and then flip the flag so that you'd have to for some other reason force a price change again but this solves that for us real quickly and easily and just like that i think uh we're ready to go on and pursue now one final technique that's going to help you refactor this code and make it super cleaner